China is one of the main carbon production countries in the world, with its northeast regions producing the most greenhouse gases. That is because the region's winter lasts six months long. To survive, people rely on boilers heated by coal. Scholars and researchers have long since looked for an eco-friendly alternative to coal. And now we introduce you to a system that relies on underground sewage to help regulate temperatures. Somewhere in China's northeastern city of Harbin, the provincial capital of Heilongjiang province, is enjoyable but short. Winter begins in October, covering the region in thick layers of snow that lasts until the next March. Most heating in Harbin is provided by boilers, which provide heating for the whole district. For every square meter of area being heated in winter, 40 kilos of coal is consumed over the course of the winter. As the coal burns, the carbon dioxide produced is multiplied by three, which means 120 kilos are discharged for every square meter. There's no way to reduce carbon emissions with these methods. For every kilo of coal burned, three kilos of carbon dioxide is released into the air. With limited supplies of natural energy source in the world, how will Northeast China endure its frigid winter while still remaining environmentally friendly? Solar energy applications in heating and cooling run into the problem of the limited availability of the sun. Sometimes the sun's out, sometimes it isn't. Storing the heat and electricity is a problem too, so there are many bottlenecks. Now wind power, it works great in the northwest, it generates electricity too, but to heat the whole vast north depletes a lot of energy. So what other non-fossil fuel can we use? It's the heat that is everywhere in our environment. Energy exists everywhere, in the air, earth and water, all which can theoretically be used to regulate temperatures in our dwellings and make our life comfortable. In northeast China, Professor Sun says sewage holds the key. Harbin's winter dips 20 to 30 degrees Celsius below zero, but sewage remains around 12 to 16 degrees Celsius. That would make a warm winter. In summer, it heats up to 30-something, but the sewage stays around 20 degrees. So in summer, it's a cooling source, and in winter, it's a heat source. Statistics show that every year, Harbin discharges 900,000 tons of sewage, while the whole of China discharges 70 billion tons. The sewage accounts for 40% of a city's background heat. So how can that energy be extracted? This is where heat pump and refrigeration cycle come into play, based on the same principle that works out refrigerators, air conditioners and heaters. A heat pump uses a substance known as a refrigerant, which has unique evaporating and condensing properties that makes it useful to manipulate temperatures. When the refrigerant of an air conditioning is compressed by its compressor, it becomes a very hot gas. Once this heat is allowed to dissipate and the pressure is reduced, the refrigerant becomes cold, which can then draw heat out from surrounding air, say a room, and so successfully lowers the room's temperatures. It is through this continuous cycle of compression via condenser and expansion, via a special expansion valve, that heat can be dissipated or absorbed. The refrigerant is then recycled back into the compressor, and the room temperature is controlled. In this circulatory system, we have a high temperature component and a low temperature one. I can channel my pipe through to extract the heat for heating or to extract the cold for cooling purpose. With increasingly limited conventional fossil fuels, humans must reevaluate our energy usage policy and discover new reusable sources. Many cities in China, besides Harbin, have already employed these green heating and air conditioning units in hotels or commercial buildings. Though sewage may be wastewater, put into the right use, it can still serve a great purpose. <laughs>